morning, everybody. Hearty welcome to the continuing of this study in the book of Revelation. We continue where we finished last time in the beginning of chapter 12. And uh, we're starting verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and crowns upon his head, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought at his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, this is a very important part, and we discussed already the verses 1 and 2, that uh, woman is not Mary, it is not um, the church. There is no church, because the church is already raptured out of here, and Mary has already been dead. Uh, sorry, the church is raptured out here. Mary's already been dead for about 1,900-plus uh, years. Um, this woman is associated with the sun, Jacob, the moon, Rachel, and the 12 stars, the 12 sons of Jacob, and it is Israel. You can check it in Genesis 39, verse, uh, 37, verse 9 and 10. Israel is taken up into the wilderness for protection on eagles' wings. And Israel is the woman that brings forth either Jesus Christ or probably a future deliverer. And that may be even somebody who is resurrected from the dead. I thought sometimes David or uh, even Peter, but there's no proof of that I can see in the scriptures. Uh, or maybe a future deliverer which has to be born and will be raptured up. Um, the dragon's religious area is on earth, but his geographical uh, location is between the second and the third heaven. Here you have the heavens. The first heaven is till the clouds. The second heaven is above the clouds till the water mass. That's the second heaven here. So you have the first and the second heaven here. And the third one is right there as a capstone upon the rest. And between the third and the second, there is this mass of water, and there is this dragon, the geographical location today, though his main spiritual interest is on earth, since he's called the God of this world in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 2. In Revelation chapter 1, verse um, 20, we have read that the angels are compared to stars. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Uh, so, an angel can be a messenger, but also an appearance. And the stars here are not the um, planets, because the stars fall on the earth. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 13, the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. When there's a fig tree, casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken out of a mighty wind. That's an interesting thing. The fig tree shows up again. Uh, by the way, the four trees, which are given here in uh, the first three and a half years, Adam, are showing up again when Jesus Christ comes, uh, the second three and a half years here, and that's exactly these two times three and a half years which the man of sin imitates here before Jesus Christ comes and takes the throne of David. And of course, that's what he wants to take to in Jerusalem. Uh, you have then the, um, the thorns and the thistles, which are cursed. That's what Jesus Christ is crowned with. These are so the curse on mankind. Uh, the vine tree, a type of the um, uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, is given here in John 15. The fig tree is cursed by Jesus Christ when there's no um, figs on there. Uh, and the fig leaves are what Adam and Eve cover themselves with. And then you have the tree of uh, life, and that's the um, olive tree. And that's given in Gethsemane where Jesus Christ uh, prays for three hours. And these three, four trees here and here are given, I think it's in Judges 8 or, or 9, uh, when they speak about each other who has the preeminence. Uh, back to the, um, so these stars are not uh, planets, they cannot, uh, stars fall on the earth, they're angels, they fall on this earth. 
and their fallen angels. And you can see that right a little further in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, 8, and 9. When they shall have finished, sorry, verse 11, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against a dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. So the dragon, the devil, has angels. And verse 9, the great dragon was cast out. So there are different dragons, but this is the great dragon. It's a dragon of all dragons. But there are dragons on earth. They were in history, and they're still there, uh, although in, in unknown places there. Uh, and the Bible says also, I think, in the book of Isaiah 34, that um, that place, uh, see the picture, where there will be a visible uh, lake of fire in the millennium, is uh, connected with devils. Also, I think, Re uh, Revelation 18 and Jeremiah 50, 51, 52, about the uh, destruction of physical commercial Babylon, speaks of a place of devils and dragons. They're connected with each other. Um, Revelation chapter 12, verse um, and the 9, uh, that old dragon is called the old serpent, called the devil and Satan. Now he's called the devil, he's called Satan, uh, but he is a dragon. So right now, he used to be a cherub, he is a dragon. That's that uh, animal they worship in China. And in many cultures, the dragon has a preeminent place in the idol worship. And his angels are connected with the fallen sons of God. They came down in Genesis chapter 6, and they will come down again. Uh, so when the corona crisis, the climate crisis, the economic crisis, the stock exchange crash, which will come, will be way worse than in 1929, will come, then you see the same things happening again. And then people will look for help above, but from the wrong dark side. And that is uh, what's going to happen now. I'm not a prophet, but um, I've seen many times when something important happened um, in, uh, in time, uh, where God came through uh, the devil uh, on the so-called anniversary, does something the exact opposite. In 1522, a very, very important thing happened there. That's Martin Luther's translated the proper Greek New Testament into German. And that was the basis for the Reformation and the revival and the start of Bible societies, missions, and all kind of things. And that's just one year away. And I'm not a prophet, but I can guess uh, knowing how the enemy thinks, he's going to use that 500th anniversary. Five is 50 times 10 times the number of the Gentiles, the number of death five, to do something uh, which will show his power when it comes to destruction of the book and the people connected with that book. And the people is also the white Anglo-Saxon people, the English-speaking people, because it was William Tyndale in 1525 who went to Wittenberg and stayed there for one year and translated the whole New Testament of Erasmus into English using heavily um, Martin Luther's translation and his marginal notes. You can check it on our website, luther5025.org, under archive. No, this, um, <coughs> this false fallen angels um, are called uh, aliens or called, uh, connected with NFN, they had flying objects. They come from outer space, they survive the flood, and they're connected with the dragon, and they're devils. Um, in Psalm 115, verse 16, we read, The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth had he given to the children of man. That's a very important uh, statement. The earth is given to the children of men, and the God of this world wants to rule that place. And he has given the authority, according to Luke 4 and Matthew 4. All this power is given unto me, and I give it to, to whom I will, if you worship me. So if you have somebody who worships that, uh, that entity, uh, he gets power, financial, political power, absolute superpower. And the Jesuits are a good example of that. In... Um, now, these fallen sons of God, they come back. What happened in Genesis chapter 6 will happen again in the near future. Uh, come to Jesus Christ's prophecy about this in um, Luke 17, verse 26 and 27. And it was, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, 
The married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, what was what happened in the days of, the, of Noah? What's very important that for 120 years, Noah preached and um, you see it in, in Jude, there was a lot of unrighteousness going on. And the unrighteousness had to do with the fallen sons of God coming down. Genesis 6, 1. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were uh, born unto them, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. They took them wives of all of which they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet this day shall be in 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And then it comes that, that every imagination, verse 5, the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. So in Genesis chapter 6, it's about uh, here, about 2300 B.C., you have these uh, fallen sons of God and their wings there, and they come down and they produce giants. Now, these giants are also there in uh, the days of Joshua when he comes into the land. Uh, so, in terms of Joshua and David, when he kills Goliath, and in 1 Samuel 17, that guy is over three meters long. And it is, will be in the days of the Son of Man. Now, it's very important that um, this kingdom of heaven, we talked about it last time, disappeared and comes back after X. Seven at Armageddon right here. And the kingdom of heaven is always connected with Jesus Christ as Son of Man. Never Son of God. Paul never speaks of Jesus Christ as um, the Son of Man or the Kingdom of Heaven. From the death of Jesus Christ till the rapture, there is what we call here a Kingdom of God. It does not meet and drink, but righteousness and joy and uh, peace in the Holy Ghost, in Revelation uh, Romans 14, 17, and 18. And Jesus Christ is called here the Son of God by Paul. All Paul's letters speak of that. Never Son of Man. The Son of Man, as it is given here, connected with the Kingdom of Heaven, is connected with the second coming of Jesus Christ and the events spoken of shortly before he comes as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And before that, he comes and we come with him, the sons of God, these fallen sons of God show up. And they fool around again with the daughters of man, and they produce what? Giants. You can see that in Daniel chapter 2, 43, that they will not mingle with the seed of man. And Revelation 13, Revelation 17, they're the ten kings, and they rule over this earth. And here, at the end, uh, three fall away, and the uh, man's number, number of a man, 666. That man, that under Christ comes up, takes the place of these uh, three, and he is the eighth. And comes out of the seven. And it's connected with Rome. <clears throat> now we see in the Dread Tribulation that the devil comes uh, as a dragon and becomes a man. A man. He's an antichrist. That means he comes in the place of Christ. He's against the true Christ. It's the devil's Christ. Uh, and he's ready for three and a half years. Just as Jesus Christ came from heaven and raised here publicly for three and a half years. And he is the great imitator. Three and a half years, three and a half years there. Before that, you have the three and a half years of peace. There's a type of the three and a half years of Adam um, in the garden in peace, in fellowship with God. 
No, we see in Revelation uh, Acts chapter 14, and when Paul and Silas are in Asia Minor, that they do a miracle, and then the people there say, the gods have come in the uh, likeness of man. And they call, I think, uh, Barnabas, uh, um, Zeus, and uh, Paul, uh, Hermes, or Mercury, because he's the spokesman there. But they're men. The sons of God are just like ordinary men, young men, without any wings. So what, what happens here is, and you see it also right now in America, the last nation with a lot of Bible-believing Christians left, um, within that body of Christ, within those even who profess to have the King James Bible, you see apostasy coming up. And that's a very sad thing, and we see many times that God always judges apostasy. He did it with the Jews, the ten and the two tribes, he did it with the Greeks who had a 1,400-year empire, I mean, America is an independent nation for over 250 years. I mean, the Greeks had an empire for uh, 70, about 60, 70 times as long as the United States is now a, a nation. Think about that. They were wiped out and destroyed and uh, plagued by the Sunni Muslims, the Turks. The Germans had a book. And the apostasy was judged when God used a Roman Catholic Austrian and sex pervert to destroy Germany in 12 years. And that's what you're going to happen, is going to happen there in the future with the United States of America. Because God is going to judge the apostasy in the nation who started just like the Dutch uh, in rebellion against the tyranny with the right Bible. There's no book. There's no nation with an English Bible started like the United States of America. And it's been taken over completely by Rome, and it will be judged. Why? Because the body of Christ, the born-again Christians, have rejected this book. Man doesn't take knowledge of what God offers him. Look at Romans chapter 10. You see it more and more in the last days. We preach the gospel of the grace of God on the streets. Uh, Romans 10, verse 6, The righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is, the word of God, faith, which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. And if you like to study, see these things and say, oh, this is very interesting, and you're not saved, you'll be damned. And the chances are that when the rapture hits today, not only you leave behind, but you will not be able to get saved because you rejected time and time and time again the gospel of the grace of God that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried and rose again from the dead, and out of love paid with his blood for your sins. And if you refuse now to come out of your seat, and repent of your own righteousness and of your own works and your own religion and only trust a person, Jesus Christ, then you will die in your sins and go to hell. But that's the message for you as an unsaved man. Get saved today. This will be the best day if you allow Jesus Christ to save you by faith alone in his finished work on the cross of Calvary. Now, the ma mankind awaits these aliens, the false visitors from outer space. Uh, Hollywood uh, brainwashes uh, the Western people, the whole people in the world, with their He-Man or Sir-Man or Batman or Superman or Spider-Man or however they're called. Uh, they're false types of the fallen sons of God. They're not there to uh, help women, but to rape women. They're not to help mankind, but to destroy mankind completely as tyrants and cannibalize them. That's the history, if you study the history of the giants and the fallen sons of God who were worshipped by human sacrifice in all continents. Now, this is the time of Lot um, and at the time of David. Um, we saw in um, let's say 1 Samuel 6, 17, 3, Goliath was a man over three meters high. And the time of Lot, we see that in um, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 2. That is, giants had mentioned in verse uh, 10 and 11. The Emims dwelt therein in times past, the people great and many and tall as the Anakims. 
which also were accounted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Emims. The Horims also dwelt in Seir before them, but the children of Esau succeeded them when they had destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their stead. And Israel did unto the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. A little further in verse 19 to 22, uh, verse 20, sorry, that also, that also was accounted a land of giants. That's uh, pr pr uh, present Jordan. Giants dwelt during all time, and the Ammonites called them Zamzumims. The people great and many and tossed the Anakims, but the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. And he did also to the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Horims from before them. The Horims are another name for these giants. Now, if you look at that, they came in the land here. The flood was here. That's about 800 years later. The time of Joshua, then David, and David, that's about 15 or maybe 1400 or so, 1450 uh, before Christ. And David, that's about 1000 before Christ. So they, after the flood, which was there to s destroy them, come back and fool around with the daughters of men. And most of the time they fooled around with Hamitic women, but they're everywhere. Uh, if you look at American history, all Indian tribes have stories of giants they had to conquer. And uh, that's come, there, there comes the cannibalism from most Indian tribes, you study them, uh, were cannibalistic. And they were cannibalistic because they had to worship these fallen sons of God and the giants produced by them with human sacrifices. And when they were wiped out, they still did that. They still stayed cannibalistic. Uh, the Incas, the Aztecs, the uh, Apaches, the Sioux, the Blackfoot, and all that stuff, you got to check them. And they all have stories on giants. And a lot of them say they come back. They're now in the middle of the earth or somewhere under the earth. Now, <clears throat> as his angels, also the enemy has the power to reproduce himself. Jesus Christ says in John 8, 44, you're of the father of the devil. And then 1 John 3, 12 says, Cain was of that evil. Uh, so it seems alluded to that Cain was not from Adam. Something happened when uh, that old serpent, as a beautiful young man, according to 2 Corinthians 11, 4, seduced Eve. And right there, she got birth pains and remembrance what the first woman did. Now, seed uh, producing it can be done with God's permissive will, um, but you cannot have um, life from dirt. Uh, that's not what enemy can do. He can take existing life, imitates it, produce it or so, but he cannot give life out of nothing. Now, the Bible says right now that he calls us in Ephesians chapter 2, children of wrath, children of uh, wrath by nature, of disobedience. He calls us child, children of hell in Matthew 23, 15, uh, snakes uh, in Matthew 23, 33. And it seems to be that Eve was seduced by the um, serpent in the form of a, a young man. And Jude was not a normal man. He was a devil, according to John 6, 17. And then you come to the point with these fallen sons of God. They're mentioned in Job chapter 1, verse 6 and 2, verse 1. They have access, or at least can speak through to the third heaven. And in Job 38, 7, they were present at the creation of the world. So yes, before Adam, that's in um, over now 6,000 years ago, they were there. And they shouted of joy. That's not the line of Seth. Now, in uh, going back to our verse, our text in the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and a child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, this man-child is a lot of ideas about it. It may be a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will rule the nations in Psalm 2, 9 with a rod of iron after he comes back and sits on the throne of David. Uh, he's born uh, from Israel. He's re uh, resurrected to heaven. Uh, but it may also be a reference to a future leader or savior of Israel. Uh, there's a lot of saviors in the book of Judges, about 13 of them, and they all may be a type of this savior, this um, human being who may come up here and uh, then rapture up here before the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
often thought maybe it may be uh, David coming back, but he's born it says here, so it cannot be David. Um, Revelation chapter 12 verse 6. And a woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and three score days. And that's these um, uh, three and a half years or 42 months. And um, um, this woman is, connect is Israel and uh, connected with that are these um, 144,000. They were supposed to preach and they're probably raptured out of here, here, somewhere here. Now you have a rapture of Moses and Elijah here, over here, but you have also the sun is raptured out of here. You have 144,000 who are raptured out of there, uh, a type of the virgins in Matthew 25. So you have different raptures, so to say. And I think you come up to seven. If you count them well, you can start with Enoch in um, Genesis 5. You get a raptured out of here. Elijah got raptured out of there in 2 Kings uh, 2. You have po possibly the... Um, a group of Old Testament saints which came out of the graves in Matthew 27 after Jesus Christ died. You have Jesus Christ himself, four. Then you have Moses and Elijah, five. Um, then you have 144,000, six. And then uh, you have one more. Oh, yeah, that's Manchild here in Revelation chapter 12, verse 6, 7. So there's seven raptures, so to say, or take people taken into heaven. And that makes sense then. That's, that's, the, that's the group. That's the group. Um, that'd be a nice uh, sermon structure to preach from. Well, in uh, Isaiah chapter 66, talking about these uh, tribulation saints, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 7, Before she travailed, she brought forth, before her pain came, and she was delivered of a man-child. <clears throat> That's the man-child. And uh, when Jeremiah speaks in, in the next book, as a young man, he's so young, he's probably a teenager, he says in verse 6, Our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. And all these 144,000, it says in uh, Revelation 7 and Revelation 14, they had not defiled themselves with women. So they may be still teenagers, and with the bar mitzvah of a Jew, who was about 13 then, he's allowed to read the scriptures. He's uh, supposed to be a man, the responsibilities of a man. Now, in Matthew chapter 16, 14, there is a reference that also... Jeremiah may come back. So Elijah comes back, Moses comes back, Jesus Christ comes back, David comes back, he's ruling in the millennium under Jesus Christ in Israel. So you see in Matthew chapter 16, verse 14, and they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So they thought that he would come back. Now they expect Elijah to come back. Well, rightly so, because he's given their in uh, Malachi 4, Moses and Elijah will come and preach before the terrible day of the Lord, second coming of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist, they knew he was a prophet. He came in the spirit and power of Elijah and Jeremiah. They expect Jeremiah to come back. Why? Because um, he preached about the king of Babylon, that he was a servant, and Nebuchadnezzar was a servant of God to uh, punish the apostate Israel. Just uh, now you have <laughs> Rome probably used uh, by the Jesuit or using the Chinese army or whatever to punish apostate American Christianity. Um, he prophesied against Israel. He prophesied against Jerusalem and his own destruction. And he went into Egypt and he prophesied at the second coming of Jesus Christ at the day of the Lord in Jeremiah 50, 51, and 52. Now, <clears throat> after Jeremiah are the... Um, Lamentations of Jeremiah. And there is a reference to a possible future deliverer of Israel. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 20. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord, was taken in their pits, of whom we said, under the shadows we shall live among the heathen. Connected with what? Look at verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, and that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee, Thou shalt be drunken and shalt be made, make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sin. So Edom gets it in the neck and um, Zion not. Now where are they after? Silapetra. That's right here, southeast of the Dead Sea. Here is Silapetra. It's an interesting place. Um, and uh, the, um, I think the first two, three hundred years 
all mosques were built direction Sela Petra, not direction um, Mecca or Medina. So maybe the old uh, Mecca was here and not where it is now in Saudi Arabia there. But that's a different thing. So possibly this little man line, this little um, uh, man who gets born is, is an individual in the tri tribulation or maybe a reference to the um, remnant of the Jews. Anyway, go back to Revelation chapter 12, verse uh, 6. We see here that um, the woman, Israel, fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's just three and a half years. And uh, she goes on eagle's wings, according to Revelation 12, verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And that's that uh, time here where she's kept. And that explains also why that prayer in Matthew 6 says, give us today our daily bread. Uh, look at the Old Testament. You see it again. And a lot of stuff from the Old Testament already in Exodus will be repeated again here. So a lot of stuff you see here. Exodus, uh, Numbers, Deuteronomy, up to two kings here is repeated again in this period of time. It's... Uh, History written in the future, or the future written in history. Why? Because God thinks that his glorification, when he uh, destroys the man of sin, shows his glory to the nations, and has Israel repented, and uh, the remnant says, Blessed is he that then comes in the name of the Lord, Jesus, is the main thing that's the highlight of time and this universe. And uh, that says when he comes back and gets all the honor and the glory, when he stumps out 200 million United Nations troops at Megiddo. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, verse 11. Deuteronomy 32, verse 11. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, and beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him and there was no stranger God with him. That's when, look at verse 10, he found him in the desert land, in the waste howling wilderness. Let him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. That's the Lord taking care of uh, Israel during the exodus coming from out of Egypt. He'll do it again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. Uh, we read it, read it, verse 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And these are uh, believers, a lot of them are Hebrew believers, and they have to do two things, keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So you have here a situation of faith and works. It's very important. So after the rapture of the church, before the second coming of Jesus Christ, there's a situation of faith in the Lord Jesus and works keeping the commandments of God and persevering to the end of this time here. If you don't do that and take the mark of the beast, and worship that false Christ, you're going to go to hell. And you lost your salvation. That's what happened there with these uh, five foolish virgins who lost the oil, the Holy Spirit, and they, you had to buy it. You can't buy the Holy Spirit now, but then in the tribulation, it's a different thing. You have to do works again and endure to the end. Now, this woman here is not Rome, Revelation 17. She's a whore and she'll be burnt. And by the way, Rome is already burnt up here, so it can never be Rome. We are in this part here. And uh, it's a revelation to Israel in Genesis 37, Rachel. And um, in Micah chapter 7, first verse 1, it says, um, you, are, you will be his people. I said the proper wording here. Uh, Micah 7, 14. Yeah. 
Yeah, feed the people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood, in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. The flock is his heritage, reference to Israel. Look at Hosea chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of Acre from a door for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. That's here in Sila Petra, right there. So again, Exodus up to 2 Kings is history of the future. And let's go over a few references there in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 19 and 20. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 19 and 20. I will bring Israel again to his habitation, and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan, and his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead. In those days, and in that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none, and the sins of Judah and they shall not be found, for I will pardon them whom I reserve. That's here at the end of the great tribulation there. Look at um, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 35, 36, and 37. I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord, and I will cause you to pass under the rod, I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. New covenant, Hebrews chapter 8. Judah and Israel, like a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, in 1 Samuel chapter 25. Verse 1 and verse 2. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. There was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great and had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was hearing the sheep in Carmel. Carmel is right here, very close to Armageddon. He's a type of the Antichrist name, well, three times six uh, types of the Antichrist. And he will be uh, cut by God. His heart becomes as a stone. And David takes the wife of uh, Nabal then. So we have Israel in the desert, in the tribulation, right here. And there's nourished with manna from heaven. Only when these Jews don't take the mark of the beast, and God takes care of them. And look at that manna given in the book of Job. Job 38, 22 and 23. Has thou entered into the treasures of the snow, or has thou seen the treasures of the hail, which I have reserved against a time of trouble, against a day of battle and war? Now when is that? That was that snow and hail was when Joshua came into the land and God put uh, hail from heaven to kill his enemies, it will happen again, right here. Treasure of hail. And that um, uh, hail will be round and white and um, like manna coming down. Okay, going back to the Revelation chapter 12. Verse um, 6, we already talked about that. The woman fled into the wilderness. God had already prepared a place. And that's why he warns that pray that your flight will not be on the Sabbath in Matthew 24, 20, 21. Because right here, that man of sin comes here and he's going to wipe out all the Jews in the land, especially in Jerusalem. And today in Israel, there are no flights between Friday evening and Saturday evening. That's the Sabbath. That's why he says in Revelation 12, 17, keep my commandments. It's faith and works, both. It's not the so here. It's only faith in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no work at all to get saved or stay saved. Now, how does the Lord take care of that? I think through airplanes. Look at Revelation 12, 14. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. That's the three and a half years. And look at the... Uh, Response of the dragon. Verse 15, the serpent cast uh, out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And that's an interesting thing. That's a huge flood. Um, uh, the, the reference on Daniel 9, uh, 26, 
and Jeremiah 47 2 that's a flood as big as a Jordan River uh, spit out by a dragon which is a few kilometers long that's how big an animal is over here between the second and the third heaven um, look at uh, Job 40 there you have the uh, Leviathan Job 40 verse um, 23, Behold, he drinketh up a river, and hasteth not, he trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. Now, Jordan, that's a huge river. If you have an animal able to take that, then you speak about a dragon of a few kilometers long, uh, even longer than that. And uh, that's a Chinese dragon. And uh, you see that also here, uh, when the nation of Israel goes out of Egypt, they go through the Red Sea, then when the Joshua, they come here through a river again, through the Jordan River. There is something with the Jordan River and uh, the dragon trying to take care of that. Now, in Revelation 12, verse um, uh, 7, there is Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. This is war. And that war is a war which started in Genesis chapter 3 over here when Adam fell and it still goes on up to Revelation 19 and even when the dragon is uh, bound for a thousand years he shows up again at the end of the millennium and again he fights with the seed of God, with the people who follow God. And that's what you see why it's so important to have this King James Bible. That's the best Bible in the world. That's a perfect book. And that's the book you have to get in the last days, in the last days of the church. And it will be probably in America becoming very, very difficult in the next four to eight years if the Lord Jesus Christ tarries. You better get yourself a King James Bible and maybe a gun on top of that <laughs> if you believe in, uh, you don't have enough grace to take it if you, you need a gun. That's fine. And then um, stick it out. Stick it out. St uh, stick with the book. Memorize the book. Uh, suffer for the book. And maybe you have to die for the book. That's what our brothers did in um, North Korea, China. Asia, Africa, South America, uh, Middle Ages in Europe as well. And um, maybe that's also what you have to do. We stick with the seed of God by which you were born again in 1 Peter 1 23. And if you're not born again, get saved now. Bow your head, go on your knees, and ask Jesus Christ to save you and trust his blood alone for the salvation of your eternal soul from hell. That's the only way we can be get out of here, raptured out of here, and not go through this terrible time with the chance of getting saved are very slim in comparison to salvation by grace through faith plus nothing. May the Lord bless you. Until next time.